Hello, this is Karen Harrison. Welcome to September 16th, 2019 Reiki Call. You can find me on my website at www.karenharrison.net. Um, you can find my YouTube channel at Karen Harrison Reiki. And my Facebook page is Whole Life Center. Um, so thanks for joining in on the conversation and we've got jordan here on the line right now welcome jordan hello how are you <laughs> good glad you're here and i was telling jordan you too. i was telling jordan a number of people tell me that they listen to these calls later because they either can't be there or um they've forgotten so that's perfectly all right too. Um, so I always like to see if the person on the call has any questions first that you'd like to discuss. Um, so Jordan, anything that you're wondering about? No, I'm just here to absorb and listen. I need some really good vibes coming my way. So I just, okay. I, wanna, I wanna absorb all the things, all the questions that other people have. All right. Well, I'm just going to activate some Reiki energy and intend to send it to you and to anyone else that is listening to or watching the call uh, later while we are talking. And I'm pretty charged Woo! up. Yeah, because I just finished teaching um, 12 new Reiki 1 and 2 students uh, in my home this weekend. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, before that, I was awesome. at the... Uh, Reiki retreat for the International Center for Reiki training presenting on Reiki for body image so I just did a shortened version of that talk I left out a few of my uh, confession stories that I did live you know about some of my bad eating habits and a few other things um, <laughs> just to make it a How little cool of you to share all of that <laughs> Yes, I, uh, anyway, I have an audio version of it if I could figure out how to convert it to something that I could do something with, I, I would, I was going to put it on the Facebook group. Anyway, um, that was a lot of fun and I hope that people will consider coming to the Sedona Reiki retreat next year over Labor Day. I'm already working on my talk for next year and I'm pretty excited about it. I got one idea and I thought, that's a really good idea, but universe, is there anything any better? And then I got another idea and I thought, well, that, that's really good too. Do you have anything any better? And then another one came in and I was like, woohoo, yay, I think All right. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. So, okay, well, here's some questions that I've gotten. Um, all right. Somebody said, I saw yesterday a symbol, which I believe was given to me to do Reiki with, but I'm not sure if a master like you needs to activate this or do some attunement for me to be able to use it or if I can start using it. I did some research because I didn't know the symbol and it is called a lap bra, if I pronounced it right. Um, after reading its meaning, now I'm not sure if it's more for my personal growth or to use it to help other people or maybe both. I need your guidance. So my answer that I wrote back to her was, if you received a symbol, you can use it. Um, and then I gave the example that when I was in a Reiki 1 and 2 class that I repeated with William Rand, I received a symbol that has now become my logo for the Whole Life Center, which is the name I call my business. Um, and, you know, since that she has received it, you have the energy to use it. Um, you can just meditate on it and ask what it has to teach you and how you are supposed to use it. So, any, any comments on that, Jordan? Anything you want to add? Any thoughts that are that's, that's like actually that's really cool. Um, 
my I guess my only comment when I was working on you previously, I had this like really crazy symbol pop in my head one day and I was like, I'm gonna put that little pin in that for later. I don't know what, who, why, left, right, but this is awesome. So I scribbled it down and who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Hmm. it'll get used maybe and like like you just said like a cool logo that's awesome uh-huh yeah yeah okay so here's another question um i'm teaching a master class next weekend i have a person interested in attending that has taken reiki one and two online only should i allow her to take the master class with just that background and not much experience she said she doesn't want to teach what would you tell this person so my answer was, if you are a professional member of the Reiki Membership Association, which is www.reikimembership.com, that's an association that William Rand uh, created for uh, Reiki Masters to be able to connect with each other and post information about their sessions and classes. So anyway, if the master who's teaching is a member of the Reiki Membership Association, you would need to follow the rules. And the rules are, um, we only teach people in person and we don't accept online training as a regular class. Um, online training is a great introduction to Reiki, but Reiki is a hands-on modality you know, just like Jordan with what you do, um, waxing, right? Yes, I do. I do some yeah. waxing for sure. Yes. yes. Jordan, how would you feel about going to somebody to get waxed that learned it all online? Well, um, I, um, <laughs> 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 I hope that explains it all. I would be quite concerned for a few reasons, not saying that they're not knowledgeable about things, but there is a tactile piece that is definitely missing. And for being somebody who taught at a beauty school and taught aesthetic services for years, I, I, I would say it's probably not the best idea, personally. <laughs> That's my, with a minus all the giggles and laughs, but personally. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I don't know what I would give them to wax, maybe my finger no <laughs> no no, I, I, no ma'am <laughs> uh, yeah yeah no, no nothing else okay so yeah, no. yeah so reiki is a hands-on modality and it's important to take a class um, and get feedback from your teacher get feedback from the other students um and you know she can take the reiki one and two class and um, she'll likely learn a lot of new things, um, you know, and, and get a chance to have that feedback from the teacher and from the other students. So that would be good. I mean, I've taken all my classes several times, um, and I always learn something new, um, whether I'm taking it again from the same person or taking it from someone else, you know, you can't possibly pick up everything in the class uh, just one time. So the next is a series of questions from a, a dialogue I had with somebody over Facebook Messenger. My brother was in the military and messed up his knees pretty badly. He's been in pain for the last four years. It's bad enough for knee replacement surgery, but he's too young for it. Um, he didn't believe in Reiki and was very close-minded about it, but the pain got so bad uh, that he asked me to Reiki him every time I see him. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, if things get bad enough, most people are willing to try Reiki. Um, there's no disbelievers in foxholes, so to speak. Um, so I've done a lot of research on what the en energy blockage means or what could help him. So my answer was, well, if he's given up on his knees, that's sad. Um, you know, send Reiki to him um, and to the original cause of the knee problems. Um, you know, do it at least 15 minutes at a time, hopefully several times a week. Um, you know, if he was in the military, he may well have PTSD 
and Reiki can help him there, uh, send Reiki to any war trauma that he's had. And um, since she's one of my students, she could also ask the Facebook group for some Reiki for him. Um, when I've given Reiki to people, I found that a lot of times physical pain has some underlying emotional um, component to it uh, that may have contributed to the physical pain or may have even caused the physical pain. Um, so clearing that out is much more likely to create a good result um, with the physical body than just, you know, working on the, the physical part of it. And to do that, you would just activate your Reiki 1 symbol, your Reiki 2 symbol, I mean, your Reiki 1, your power symbol, your mental emotional symbol, your distance symbol, and any other symbols that you have, and then intend to connect um, with the person you want to send Reiki to, and then intend to send Reiki back to the original cause of whatever issue it is. So it's that simple. That's all there is to it. And then her response was, I've done, done a lot of research and believe it's more emotional rather than physical. How do you suggest I Reiki it um, if I don't know the cause? So again, just activate all the symbols you know, send Reiki to his knees, and intend to send Reiki to the original cause. That's it. Let Reiki do the work, and there's no need to figure anything out, because Reiki is spiritually guided life force energy and it will know what to do you know as the reiki practitioner all you have to do is activate the reiki and let it do the work and then she asked does he have to know each time i reiki him or does it work while he's doing his own thing i'm gonna tell him i'm just wondering what works best because we live three hours away so my answer was you can send Reiki at any time. Um, if you want to increase the chances he feels it, then let him know when. You can also send it at any time and intend for him to receive it at a certain time. So for example, you know, say you have some time available at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, but you want the person to receive the Reiki at 10 p.m. when they're going to bed. Um, again, with your symbols, power symbol, mental emotional symbol, the distance symbol. When you send the Reiki, intend to send it to begin at 10 p.m. It's all about intention. So that's all there is to that. He can receive it when he's getting ready for bed. And the Reiki is going to work whether he feels it or not. Um, so it'll work. He will enjoy it more. And if, you know, he's laying down relaxed and is on the lookout for it, you know, then he's going to be more likely to feel it unless you're working with someone that is really, really sensitive. Um, that happens occasionally, but most people are probably not that sensitive that they're going to notice that, oh, somebody was sending me Reiki. <clears throat> um, so, Jordan, I don't know if you've had anybody that, um, you know, you've sent Reiki to that maybe didn't know it and had any thoughts on that, if they were able to feel it or not? Yes. Um, I, I, I don't know if I'm, I don't want to say the word lucky, but I found that every person I've worked on distance-wise, they have such a huge impact of feeling um, things that they don't even have the appropriate words for because they, they're not even sure exactly what washed over them or warmed or, you know, they, they're, it's quite, quite exciting um, mm -hmm. hearing that kind of feedback. Uh, and I also kind of love it because not that I'm not thinking that it doesn't work, but that they're actually knowing that it does work, if that makes any sense. Yes. Wow. That's wonderful. Yeah, I feel quite fortunate for that. And um, I had a kind of, I don't know if you're done with that little series of questions. I yes. wanted to ask uh, if you could expand upon the 
you know, setting kind of a, your time and intention, how far in advance are you able to do kind of something like that? Is it, do, does it really matter if you have a set time and it's a week in advance or something along those lines and you're unable to work at that point in time? Are you able to do something along those lines versus a few hours? Absolutely. You know, Reiki doesn't have any limitations in time and space. So um, you can send something a week in advance or more. I mean, I do all the time. Um, you know, like for my um, Reiki class that I taught this weekend, I've been sending Reiki in advance to that class for the last month. Um, I just had surgery just a little over a week ago. I had sinus surgery. And yes, yes I scheduled that. How are you feeling? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, I'll tell you in a second. I scheduled that about a month out. So I immediately started sending Reiki to the surgery, to the doctor, to myself. Um, and it was in the office. Uh, I think I would have been less nervous had it been while I was asleep. But knowing someone was going to be drilling on my nose while I'm awake um, was rather unnerving. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, I had, even with the Reiki, I will admit to having had some anxiety about all that. Um, so actually the surgery went very well. Um, the recovery has gone mostly well. I mean, hey, I didn't, I bought a bag of frozen peas to use for, you know, mm -hmm. swelling and stuff, but I, it didn't have any swelling and I didn't have any bruising and I totally forgot to use them. So I've been eating them instead. <laughs> uh, so it's gone fine other than, you know, some of the medication side effects that's not been so pleasant because I mm. hardly ever take any medication at all. And, you know, the antibiotic the doctor gave me, um, yeah, it's not been fun. I've had to get extra Reiki to deal with those side effects of feeling dizzy and nauseous and headaches and all that. But um, anyway, I, I'm excited to... Oh, also, I didn't have to use any um, pain meds after the surgery. You know, all the Reiki. Oh, that's awesome. I know. The Reiki just took care of it. So I think that is pretty awesome because the doctor gave me a huge bottle of some pretty powerful pain meds. Um, and, well, I took half a pill when I got home um, thinking I would need it, and it wore off. And it's like, well, okay, I guess I don't need it. Yay. Um, nice. Yeah. So when I went to the Reiki retreat, we got an update on the Reiki research. And again, the latest Reiki research confirms that Reiki is really good for um, pain reduction. Um, it's good for preparing for surgery. It's good for post-op. It's great for um, stress reduction and anxiety and depression, as well as practitioner well-being. You know, because when you give Reiki, you also get Reiki. So that is one of the nice benefits of it. That's fantastic. Yeah, so now I totally forgot. Did I answer your question? I just went on a, a roundabout. Yeah, yeah, you did. You did. You did. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, another question I got was um, one of my students said, I didn't write down how to send Reiki with my eyes. Um, you know, can you remind me? So Reiki with the eyes is called Gyoshiho, G-Y-O-S-H-I hyphen ho. Okay, so that's sending method. And to send Reiki with your eyes, all you do is activate your power symbol, your mental emotional symbol, your distance symbol, and then 
I'm taking off my glasses here, Jordan. I know you can't see it. And then you stare. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe you don't actually have to stare, but you intend to send Reiki with your eyes. Okay. And you can send it um, to all sorts of things. Uh, I used it at an IRS audit that I had several years ago. Um, and the IRS ended up paying me $800 as a result of that audit. I was pretty pleased with that. Nice. Outcome. I was sending it with my eyes. Love I was it. also sending it with my hands under the table, um, you know, while she was interviewing me and wanting me to um, explain some of my paperwork. Um, you can use it when you're at your kid's sporting events. It probably wouldn't be cool to hold your hands up and intend to send Reiki to your kids because people would be wondering why you're trying to catch the ball that is never coming. <laughs> you know, you're going to look awkward. Um, so sending Reiki with your eyes is good. As a counselor, um, I can also send Reiki with my eyes during my counseling sessions. And... Mm. Say you're holding a little baby, you know, you can give Reiki with mm -hmm. your hands and Reiki with your eyes. Um, if you're driving um, and you see an accident, you can send Reiki with your eyes for as long as you can gaze at it. And then after that, you can intend that your hands on the steering wheel are the people that need the help and um, send Reiki with your hands, intending the steering wheel are the, the people that need, need the Reiki energy. Awesome. Yeah, so that's Gyoshi Ho. And then the other question um, she had is, um, how do I send Reiki to my kids? How do I send my kids off to school each day with protection? So in class I had shared that I would often, uh, when I dropped my daughter off at school, I would draw the power symbol, you know, as I was waving goodbye to her. And my daughter would always go, stop that, mom, stop that. You know, like anybody <laughs> what I was doing. I mean, it just looks, I'm sure it just really looked like me waving. Uh, but, of course, the teenager doesn't want to have that weird, oh, mom. Which I'm sure she Mom. Thought. Yeah, I know, which I'm sure she thought I was probably maybe still thinks I am. Um, <laughs> anyway, you can do that. Um, send them a power symbol. Another fun thing I like to do, um, the power symbol has got some uh, coils in it. And so I like to imagine dropping it over the body, kind of like a slinky, and it can just go all the way down and uh, provide um, protection and support. You can intend that it transmute any negative energy. Um, I had someone else talk to me about her kiddo in class who felt like she was picking up negative energy from the other kids in the classroom or from, you know, some kid and it was giving her a stomach ache. So, um, yeah, using the power symbol to provide that transmuting energy, intending only positive energy gets in and any negative energy is being uh, transmuted. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any times when you uh, need need that little tool? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish I could just kind of throw it out like glitter on some people. <laughs> <laughs> glitter. Oh. You know, like, kind of throw it out like glitter and it just catches whomever it falls on. <laughs> Well, that sounds like a good idea. Reiki can do that. Yeah, Reiki glitter. There you go. Reiki glitter. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I, I, um, you know, impasse need some extra um, powering up and protection, um, you know, because they're sensitive, you know, that would be me. And it's easy to pick up other people's energy and absorb it and, and then, you know, wonder why am I feeling bad? Well, you know, I've just picked up your stomach pain or your 
emotional pain or I can feel it in my heart. But, you know, one of the, one of the gifts of working with Reiki over time is I'm pretty in tune with my energy field. So usually if I pick up somebody else's stuff, I can recognize, I don't think this is mine. And then I just intend to release it and ground it. And usually it disappears. I guess if it doesn't disappear, then, well, maybe it is mine. Okay, maybe I need to rake you that part. Let's see what's going on. Okay, let's see if I have some more. Um, Okay, another woman writes, I've been incorporating Reiki into my massage practice and absolutely love it. I will always be so very grateful for you sharing this amazing new world with me. Well, I'm grateful for her too, you know, to practice Reiki. So I'm hoping to broaden my scope and work with the animals. I know that's something you do and was wondering if I could pick your brain a bit. Is it something you need additional licensing for? I know we touched on it in class, but do you have any extra tips or recommendations on books or continuing education? So for my students, I took Kathleen Prasad's Animal Reiki book, and I created a two-page Cliff Notes version of it um, and summarized that and put it in the folder. So that book is certainly something that you could check out. And then the International Center for Reiki Training has a Reiki News magazine, which I highly recommend because it has lots of great articles in there. I usually have an article in there um, every time. And there's lots of articles from other people from all different lineages of Reiki. Um, we almost always have um, animal articles. And then William Rand took... Um, a number of the animal Reiki articles out of the Reiki News magazine and compiled it into a book called Reiki for Animals. So you can get that on uh, www.reiki.org. Um, there's also people that teach animal Reiki. Generally, most people require that you've had uh, Reiki 1 and 2 first and then you can take um, an animal Reiki class. Um, and usually the class will also allow you to practice on some animals. Um, and down the line, hopefully the International Center for Reiki Training is going to be offering um, an animal Reiki class and book. So that's in the works, I'm excited about that. Uh, regarding, you know, is there any licensing for it? No, there's no licensing for Reiki in the U.S. Um, so it would be good if you're going to be doing Reiki professionally to get Reiki liability insurance. Um, you can get that through Massage Magazine. Um, you can get it as part of being a professional member of the Reiki Membership Association or there's other organizations that offer it too. You can probably just Google that. So, uh, well, Jordan, have you worked on any animals? I have, I've worked on my cat a few times. And I know, you know, typically cats kind of don't really need it, but she gets feline acne, which I know everybody's like, what, feline acne? Trust me, I know. And I've never had a cat before because I'm allergic. That's a whole different story. But um, <laughs> I kind of... <laughs> but she, she did you get a hairless like, cat? No, she actually has all the hair. She's an American rag doll, and she's a darling. But Ooh, they have she a lot is, of hair. <laughs> yes, yes. The universe wanted me to suffer a little bit with her, but that's okay. Uh, uh, she uh, showed up at my ex-husband and I's doorstep, and I was like, nope nope and then one day I saw her little sad eyes I'm like oh. it, it was just it was like a little Sally Struthers commercial and I'm like okay girl come on in but yeah. um she gets <laughs> she gets feeling acne under her chin and her mandible area and around her little mouth and so she doesn't pick at it and mess with it I have to kind of reiki the whole situation and it helps so much um so she's not 
constantly messing with it because eventually she'll scratch herself to a sore. Oh, yeah. Not, that's not cute. <laughs> no, no. Wow. Yeah. Well, my sister recently asked me for Reiki for her cat. Um, her cat suddenly developed some sort of kidney problems. And, you know, oh. I started sending Reiki to the cat. And, you know, I heard the cat saying, I'm tired. You know, I don't know, because when you connect in with an animal, um, you may be able to, you know, kind of tune in to them. And maybe I was, maybe it's my imagination. I have no idea. But um, I heard the cat saying, you know, I'm tired. And the, the cat also said, I'm tired of being a fat cat. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he also said that he was very concerned about leaving his mom and dad, um, you know, because he knew that they would be really sad. Um, but when I heard that, I thought, yeah, he probably won't be hanging on much longer. And sure enough, no. within, uh, a week, um, you know, he passed on. Um, but I, you know, was sending Reiki to him and also to my sister and her husband to help them with their loss because, you know, a cat is a very important member of their family and, um, you know, they will miss him quite a lot. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Um, my personal trainer asked me for Reiki for his two chihuahuas. Um, you know, they were about the same age and uh, getting old and starting to have more and more health problems. And, you know, one seemed to really like the, other, the Reiki. The other one, I can only do Reiki at a distance because uh, if I came close to him, he was rather defensive and he would try to bite me um but anyway I, en mm -hmm. I enjoyed working with those two dogs and um it also gave you know my trainers some comfort and solace and knowing that they were receiving some energetic support before both of them ultimately passed on oh yeah and then have you ever had a bird hit your window I have. Yeah. Well, that is a great time to give Reiki uh, if a bird gets stunned and it's laying there on the porch and, you know, because you can send Reiki right through the window and oh, I've cool. seen them get up and, about yeah, and get up and fly. That's awesome. I never thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I have another question, but I think I'm going to save it, um, you know, for next time and maybe move into the, you know, sending and receiving portion. I know you said you were going to have to go. Uh, yeah, a little bit. unfortunately, do. I'm so sorry. Well, that's okay. Hey, I really appreciate you being here and being able to have a discussion. Maybe, maybe next time yeah. I'll invite another one of my Reiki colleagues in to, um, you know, yeah. some more discussion. That Reiki might be kind of fun. Uh, you know, because... For sure. Yeah, cause lots of things that we could uh, talk about. Yes, absolutely. I'm like, I'm going to be thinking and sending out my Reiki while I'm having to go and do another conference call. <laughs> okay. All right. Well... Thank you so much, Karen. I appreciate thank you for it. Joining I appreciate you call. Yes. Yes, I appreciate these calls. Thank you so much. Thank you. And all right, I will talk to you soon. All right, super. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, and for the rest of you, I'm going to again just strengthen my Reiki energy by thinking of it a little bit more consciously. Now the Reiki is always flowing, but it flows probably a little better when I'm focusing on it than. Um, you know, if I'm just turn it on and then I'm doing other things, um, when I do that, I find generally it'll flow pretty good for maybe 15 minutes and then it kind of peters out. 
So activating my Reiki, the power symbol, I'm just gonna visualize them in my hands. I guess, hey, I can look at my hands this way on the screen. The power symbol, okay, the mental emotional symbol, and the distance symbol. And now I'm intending to send Reiki to everyone that listens to this call or watches it later. And also to all the people affected by Hurricane Dorian. So I'm also going to begin with an opening prayer. Okay. Father, Mother, God, Sweet Holy Spirit, we call on Reiki healing energy. I intend to set my personality and ego aside to be a clear and open channel, following the highest and holiest Reiki energy. We intend that this Reiki energy benefits everyone who watches this call or listens to it later. And we intend that it help them for their highest good and for the highest good of all concerned. We intend for it to create healing, harmony, peace, trust, health, abundance, love, and all things good. And we send this Reiki healing energy out as a blanket, a wave of peace and love to all people on earth, to all living things, to take care of Mother Earth herself, the land, the bodies of water, the plants, the animals, the birds, all people affirming that they have food for all, shelter for all, peace for all, safety for all, love for all. I'm so grateful to be part of this interconnected web of healing, love, spreading across the earth. And so it is. So now there'll be time in silence where I'm sending the Reiki healing energy. I think rather than holding my hands up the whole time, I'll just put them on my lap, you know, because that works too. Uh, it really doesn't matter what hand position you have your hands in for the Reiki. And just intend to receive and absorb this Reiki healing energy.
And I'm just going to give Reiki for a couple more minutes. I hear my assistant is arriving to finish all my class paperwork from my class this weekend. So, <laughs> yes, we are recording and I'm just going to send Reiki for a couple more minutes and she's going to get to work. So, clicking the computer keys right next to me. So I'll just give you a final burst of Reiki healing. And I'm grateful for you watching this recording and enjoying the Reiki energy. Join us again, usually the third Monday of the month at 7 p.m., unless I'm traveling, um, to get on the email list for Reiki Call. Simply email me at karen at karenharrison.net and I will get you added to it so that you can send in your questions and also so that you will get the recording um, if you're not able to be live on the call. And then I'll also be uploading this to my website at karenharrison.net and to my YouTube channel at Karen Harrison Reiki. Um, oh, it's also on iTunes. Almost forgot about that. Um, Yes, you can find the Reiki Call podcast on iTunes. So those are all some different places that you can find the recording and find me. I look forward to uh, having you join us again next time. Much love and blessings to you. And yeah, namaste. Bye.